This is the first video in a series of five where we overview data structures. In this video, we discuss linked lists. A linked list is a data structure that provides a foundation upon which other structures can be built, such as stacks, queues, graphs and trees, all something we'll look at in later videos. Linked list is constructed from nodes and pointers. A start node identifies the first node. And each node contains data and a pointer to the next node. Many programming languages support lists in addition to arrays. Data in lists can be stored anywhere in memory with pointers indicating the address of the next item. By adding an extra pointer, nodes can point to the previous and next items, known as a doubly linked list. A circular linked list can be created by making the last node point to the first node. And again, each node in a circular linked list can also have an additional pointer pointing to the previous item, creating a doubly circular linked list. A linked list can be implemented using a static array. Being static data structures, arrays are stored contiguously in memory, requiring the use of an index register to determine where a specific index is in relation to a base or start address. Notice how the items are stored in the array in contiguous order, Ben, Dave, Andy and Craig. However, in the linked list, the items are being stored alphabetically because of their pointers. Andy, Ben, Craig, Dave. While a linked list can be implemented using a static array, its true benefit becomes evident when using object oriented techniques. With a linked list that uses objects, any available memory address can be used to store data. It does not need to be adjacent as each node points to the next in the structure. The memory footprint of the data structure is not determined at compile time and can be changed dynamically at runtime, referred to as a dynamic data structure. Linked lists can be used in many situations, so here's some examples. Operating systems managing a processor to store process blocks in a ready state. Image viewers to switch between previous and next images. Music players to store tracks in a playlist. And web browsers to navigate backwards and forwards through a list of visited pages. Linked lists could also be used for hash table collision resolution as an overflow, and we'll look at this in our video on hash tables later. And maintaining a file allocation table of linked clusters on secondary storage. There's a number of operations you need to be familiar with that can be formed on a linked list. We need to be able to add a node and delete a node. We need to be able to move on to the next node in the previous and traverse through a, a list in a linear fashion. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How do linked lists work? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, 
And finally, we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB, so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.